everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Shutter School. I am your host, Dustin Thompson, joined as always by my beautiful girlfriend-assistant V. And on tonight's episode, we are going to teach you how to take smoke photos, just like this. Show you two different ways to do this shot. One of them is the fancier way with wireless triggers and snoots, and the other way is what I call the MacGyver method, which if you're not familiar with MacGyver, he was on a show in the 90s where he would escape from the bad guys with duct tape and paper clips and such, and oh my gosh. And the best part about these shots is you don't even need a fancy studio. In fact, come on into my house because that's where we're going to be shooting today. So without further ado, Let's get started. One thing I love about these shots is that you don't need these big fancy backdrop stands and in fact you don't need a backdrop at all. It's all about off-camera flash. Overall the shot is quite easy once you know the basics. But before I explain why the shot does work, I'm going to show you a few things that don't work and explain why. The first thing that doesn't work is what's called bare bulbing, which is where you put the flash on the camera and you shoot it directly at your subject. And unfortunately bounce flash won't work for this either. Another thing that won't work is open side flash. That is shooting the flash from the side without any type of a modifier on it. Chances are, unless you're in a room the size of an airplane hangar, it's going to light up the room and then light's going to be hitting the lens of the camera as well causing lens flare. So to fix this, we're going to put a snoot on our flash. Since we're using the flash indoors, we want to use either a really large room or a setup kind of like what I have going on here. I have the camera frame just above my subject and the flash is actually shooting down the hallway. This will ensure that light doesn't bounce back and affect the shot. If you're going to be shooting in the house, one thing you're going to want to be conscious of is where these little guys are at. I try to be as far away from them as possible because it is no fun being all set up and ready to go when the smoke detector starts going off. Trust me, I'm speaking from experience. And lastly, I seriously doubt that this shot will work outdoors. It would have to be an incredibly still night for the smoke not to be blowing all over the place. Well, now that we've gone over the things that won't work, let's go over some of the things that definitely will work. Here's my wireless setup. I have a light stand, a tripod, my camera with my master trigger, I have my Rogue flash bender that I will be using as a snoot on my flash with the slave trigger and an adapter that will put all of this on my light stand. I have my nifty little incense holder and a lighter, and I have this very high-tech cardboard box that I will use to line my holder up with my light stand and my tripod. To focus my shot, I'm going to get everything set right where it's going to be, and then I'm going to focus on the very tip of the incense stick. I will then switch it to manual focus. This is very important because we're going to have a really hard time focusing in low light, and the incense stick isn't even going to be in our picture. So after I have it all focused, I will compose my shot, I will move it just to where the stick is out of the frame, and we are set. The next part is a little on the tricky side, and this is all up to you. You need to decide how much light you want in the room while you are shooting. This will change the settings quite a bit. I am always shooting at ISO 100 to keep my shots free of noise, and within my flash sync speed range, which I start at 1 1 25th of a second, but the aperture is a huge variable, and I'm going to show you how to adjust for the light in the room. To adjust my aperture, I will turn off my flash and take a shot. If you can see any of the scene in the picture, then the aperture value is too low. So I will increase my aperture value, let's go with F8, and try again. The black screen is what we are looking for. We're ready to go. I am also going to manually set the power of the flash. For this shot, I'm going to set it at half power. I'm doing this because I don't need it to be super strong and it will also recycle much faster in between shots. Since the smoke is constantly changing, we will always need to be ready to grab that shot. If the smoke is drifting towards or away from you, the focus may need to be readjusted. What I'll do in this case is I'll turn on some lights and I will manually focus on the smoke. This may have to happen several times depending on the air currents in the room. I personally like shooting in a dim room. Sometimes I'll turn on a light in a different room, just enough so I can see the smoke and not have to crank my aperture up too high. What you're looking for is a solid black background with nice white smoke. If you review your shot and see that your smoke has become too blown out, 
increase your aperture until you get more detail. It may take a little bit of fine tuning. If you're looking at your shots and you're thinking, man, I wish my smoke was a little bit brighter, try turning it down one stop on your aperture. But after doing that, check your shots and make sure that no unwanted ambient light has snuck into your pictures. One other thing to take into consideration is your white balance. For white smoke, be sure that it is set to flash. But here's where you can kind of let your creativity go a little bit wild because with other white balances, you'll have red or blue or other colored smoke. Wow! You will find sometimes that the smoke will get a little bit boring. Just disturbing it a little bit or blowing on it should make it nice and interesting again. If you get too much wind, it'll get a little bit too crazy and you'll have to give it just a second to settle back down again. Now if you're experimenting and you're just going shot after shot, cone after cone, the room could get a little bit foggy and that's kind of going to make your shot look a little hazy. So you might want to open a window or give it a little bit of a break in between cones. Well that pretty much sums up the way to do this shot the wireless way. But if you don't have flashes or snoots or anything like that, don't worry, I got your back. Because I'm about to show you how to get this done MacGyver style. One thing that I love about making the videos is that sometimes by teaching others, I learn something too. You see, I've been doing my smoke shots the same way for a long time where I fire the flash from the side just like in the wireless setup and I had this idea as I was shooting, it was like a lightning bolt hit me in the head and I thought, I wonder what would happen if I fired the flash straight down and the results were epic. Now for my manually triggered setup, I still have my tripod, my camera and my flash but this time instead of the flash bender for a snoot, I will be using a Pringles can. Now certain flashes are a little bit larger so you may have to use the tube that a poster comes in and secure it with a little bit of duct tape. I'm also using a piece of black poster board so that when I fire the flash down on the smoke, the light won't bounce back. For this shot, the camera settings will be a little different. My ISO will be the same. The major difference is that since I don't have a trigger for my flash, I will be holding the flash over the smoke and triggering it by hand. So I will set my shutter speed for between 3 to 5 seconds in order to get to the flash and push the button. Since the exposure will be longer, we will need to adjust the aperture the same way as before to get that black screen. So I'm going to leave the light on just so you can see what I'm doing. I put myself in a spot where I can work the camera and the flash without wandering around in the dark, falling down, hurting myself, and it will also keep me from getting hate mail from people who trip over their tripod and break their cameras. I'm making sure to fire my flash right down the center of the column of the smoke. That will ensure that it's nice and evenly lit. Other than that, it's pretty much the same shot. I focus it the same and I just keep shooting until I see something I like. Pew! Now that I have some shots that I'm happy with, I'll throw them into Lightroom and show you some tricks in post-processing. First we're going to go over just your basic edit. Just a way to make it pop a little bit more. We're going to go up a tiny bit in the exposure, a little more in the contrast, we're going to turn the blacks up just to make it a little bit more dramatic. I'm going to go up a little bit in the clarity. You don't want to go up too much in the clarity, otherwise it'll look kind of HDR. And you might notice a tiny bit of noise in your picture, so we'll denoise it just a little bit. And that's about all you need. Next up is the color gradient. So we're going to select our gradient tool here. Make sure all of our settings are at zero. We're going to choose blue. And we're going to drag this down from the top to right about there. That looks pretty good. Be sure you select new before you start a new color, otherwise it will affect your previous color. So we're gonna go with red, drag that up from the bottom, and if that is not the most patriotic thing you've seen in a long time, I don't know what is. Next up is the incredibly simple and beautiful color inversion. All you do is on your tone curve, you drag the right side all the way down to the bottom, and your left side all the way up to the top, and you're done. And while we have our inverted photo here, why don't we throw a gradient on it? It's the same as doing it on a regular smoke photo, the only difference is that the colors are gonna be some weird opposite version of what they normally would be. So you can see the blue is kind of a yellow. Let's see what the red does. It's kind of a teal color, but it sure is pretty. Color brushes are one of my favorites, so we're gonna select the brush tool, make sure everything's at zero, we're gonna go with red and we just start painting it in here. Be sure you select new in between colors, otherwise it will affect the previous color. I'm also using a nice feather on this brush so the colors will just kind of fade together. The nice thing is you can pretty much do whatever you want. You can do half and half. You can just do a one color blend, but we're gonna get a little crazy and we're gonna go rainbow on this one. 
and we'll finish it off with yellow. It's super easy and the effect is stunning. Next up we're going to go over what is called the Harris Effect, which is taking three pictures, separating them into different color channels, and then combining them all. So I have my three smug pictures and I have one layer called Barrel. You're gonna see what we're gonna do with that in a second here. So I'll go to my first file and I will take only the blue channel from this one, turn these off. Then I'm going to select all and copy, go back to my layers, I'll go to the third picture, go to channels there. I'm going to go back to blue and paste the previous file onto the blue channel. And now I will go to my second file, go over to channels, and I'm gonna take only the green from this one. Select all and copy. And then we're gonna go back again to the third file and paste the green channel onto this one. And as you can see, the thumbnail is already getting pretty wild looking. So we're gonna go to the third one, we're going to go to the red channel, we're going to copy it and paste it right back onto it. And when we turn on the RGB, you will see that this turned out pretty cool. Now you may remember that I saved the barrel layer. I did that because I want the barrel to be pretty much, you know, your normal gun barrel color. So we're gonna create a layer mask and I'm going to paint that in with the standard colored barrel. And there you have it, the Harris effect. Last but certainly not least is the smoke composite. As you can see, I have a photo of the smoke and one of myself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the opacity down so you can see both of the photos. And I'm going to scale the smoke. Be sure you hold down the shift key so that it scales it properly. And I'm also going to rotate it because I don't like how it's kind of leaning off to one side. So now that it's pretty much straight up, let's move it into position. That looks pretty good right there. Now we will apply the transformation and then we will create a layer mask. So we click on this little rectangle here and we grab the brush tool. We will carefully go over my face and all of the areas that were affected by the smoke picture. Be real careful around the edges, we don't want it to dig into the smoke. And now that that's done, we can raise the opacity back up to 100% and there it is. Now all that's left to do is to flatten the image. Well, that's gonna do it for this episode of The Shutter School. I would love to see what you get, so feel free to share it in the comments below or at my Facebook page, facebook.com dash Dustin Thompson Photography. We have a lot of really cool ideas coming up on The Shutter School, so be sure you subscribe. Well, until next time, I'm Dustin Thompson, and she's V, and we'll talk to you soon.